Hello and welcome. I will be answering YX 2020 Economics Objective Pass Question 2. When the production possibility curve shifts outwards, the economy experiences A. Growth, B. Overproduction, C. Inefficient use of resources, D. Underproduction. Now, a production possibility curve, abbreviated as PPC, is a graph, refers to a graph or a curve showing the possible combinations of different commodities of different commodities that can be produced in a given economy now there is a condition and this condition given that given that the or given the prevailing level of technology given the prevailing level of technology if all available productive resources are efficiently utilized so as we have stated here it is just a curve that shows possible combinations of various commodities that can be produced right that can be produced based on the prevailing level of technology based on the technology available and if all productive resources are utilized efficiently now in a production possibility curve there are two ways it could shift it could shift outward it could also shift inward now when it shifts outwards when the PPC shifts outwards it means that output is increasing and when it shifts inwards it means that output is decreasing so from the question we are asked what happens when it shifts outwards and we have established the fact that the output is increasing and when output is increasing there is likely to be overproduction of resources so overproduction option b is the correct answer to this question thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers Hello and welcome. I will be answering YX 2020 Economics Objective Past Question 3. Land as a factor of production is made useful through the A. Application of human effort B. Acts of nature C. Application of fertilizer D. Use of machines Now, land as a factor of product production land as a factor of production as it relates to economics is defined as a free gift a free gift of nature okay this means that land is not manufactured but rather it is a free gift of nature now what does it mean for land to be useful or land to be made useful when land is made useful it means it is efficiently utilized for the purpose of production So that is when you are well, that is when land can be said to be useful. Now, in order for land to be efficiently utilized for the purpose of production, human effort or human activities, so I would say human activities or effort needs to be present. Needs to be present. So humans must carry out activities on the land or must put effort into utilizing the land for the purpose of production in order for land to be made useful so human activities or effort needs to be involved so for that you can say human activity needs to be applied so application of human effort human effort or activity needs to be applied to land for it to be made useful so option a says application of human effort so as we have established this is the correct answer to this question.
thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers. Hello and welcome. I will be answering YEC 2020 Economics Objective Past Question 4. In a free market economy, resources are allocated through the A. Government Department B. Price Mechanism C. Trade Union D. State Planning Committee So, a free market economy is also referred to as capitalism. And in a free market economy or capitalism, it is a type of economic system a type of economic system in which means of production are owned and controlled owned and controlled by private individuals now, examples of countries that you can find this free market economy or capitalism include USA, Japan, Italy, France, ETC. Now, as it relates to what controls allocation of resources, or in, a, in order for me to rephrase, I would say in, as it relates to production, and consumption of production and consumption of regulation or of uh, resources okay production and consumption of resources it is regulated by what is called price mechanism it is regulated by what is known as price mechanism now price mechanism determines what producers have to produce taking into consideration the demand of consumers and the price offered for the goods so as we have established what is known as price mechanism is responsible for how resources are allocated so option b is price mechanism which is the correct answer to this question thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers Hello and welcome. I will be answering YX 2020 Economics Objective Past Question 5. So you have a diagram here which is labeled as Figure 1. Now, the diagram in Figure 1 above de depicts A. A. Simple bar chart. B. Complex bar chart. C. Components bar chart. D. Multiple bar chart. Now, the first thing we know from this information and from the options given to us is that it is a kind of bar chart and the bar chart is basically a statistical tool that represents data in rectangular bars in rectangular bars now the data given to you determines what kind of bar chart you use now there are three kinds of bar charts you have the simple bar charts you have the component bar chart and the multiple bar chart. Now, the simple bar chart is used when you have just one variable to represent. Let's say a variable like number or age or population, just one variable to represent in the chart. Then the component bar chart is used when you have two variables to represent. So you could have, uh, let's say, things like number of males and females, 
number of males and females or just two variables to represent then the third one which is multiple bar charts is when you have three or more variables three or more variables to represent so you draw multiple bars uh, for the corresponding parts of whatever you want to represent now from this uh, diagram that we have here we have just two variables represented just two variables represented and this is a component bar chart so a component the bars of a component bar chart look like this okay with two portions one portion representing one variable and the other portion representing another variable so as we have established what we have here is a component bar chart and component bar chart is option c which is the correct answer to this question Thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers. Hello and welcome. I will be answering YX 2020 Economics Objective Past Question 6. So you have a figure here which is labeled figure 2 and it shows change in demand for a commodity x which is a normal good now the question we have to use it to answer is which of the following caused the change in demand from d1 d1 to d2 d2 a fall in the income of consumers b rise in the price of a substitute c rise in the price of a complement d fall in the supply of commodity x now this diagram represents or depicts what is known as a rightward shift in demand a rightward shift in demand and this is an increase this depicts an increase in demand at a constant at a constant price so the price remains constant but the demand for that particular product or commodity increase so we are asked what could be the cause of such change such increase in demand now in this case the increase in demand is brought about it is brought about by a by a favorable change in factors affecting demand aside the price of the commodity aside the price of the commodity an example of some of these factors could include let's say this favorable uh, change in factors could include increase in the income of consumers or increase in price of a substitute now increase in income of consumers will increase the demand for this commodity because the consumers now have the purchasing power irrespective of the price like i said the diagram represents uh, this change in demand at constant price so the price has not changed okay so the price hasn't changed but because the in the income of the consumer has increased they can now purchase this product so the demand for it will increase and now another favorable uh, factor we saw is the increase in price of a substitute now when the price of a substitute increases a substitute commodity increases the consumers will go for the cheaper product okay they will go for the cheaper product irrespective of the fact that the price of that product hasn't changed but because the price of the substitute has increased they will go for a cheaper commodity or a cheaper product that can still perform that same function that they want so this also causes the demand curve a rightward shift in the demand now as we have established here increase in price of a substitute is one of the factors that can cause a change in demand from d1 d1 to d2 d2 as shown in this diagram so rise or increase in price of a substitute is option b and option b is the correct answer to this question thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers
Hello and welcome. I will be answering YEC 2020 Economics Objective Past Question 7. So you have a diagram here and you have some curves or some graphs. Now the curves D0, D0 and S0, S0 are the initial demand and supply curves respectively. What happens when government provides subsidy to producers? A. The supply curve will shift from S0, S0 to S2, S2. B. The supply curve will shift from S0, S0 to S1, S1. C. The demand curve will shift from D0, D0 to D1, D1. D. The supply curve will shift from S1, S1 to S0, S0. So you have... Let's locate the curves. So this is D0, D0 here. This is it here. So this is D0, D, D0. Okay. And then you have S0, S0. So this is it here. This line here. Now, we are asked. These two lines we have located, these curves we have located, are, we are told that these are the initial, the initial demand and supply curves. These are the initial demand and supply curves, respectively. Now, we are asked what happens when government provides subsidy to the producers. Now, as it relates to this, the supply curve, the supply curve, if government provides subsidy, the supply curve will shift from S0, S0 to S2, S2. Now, this shift or this change indicates, okay, I would say due to an increase in supply. This occurs as, as a result of increase in supply, meaning that the supply curve okay the supply curve which is s0 s0 will shift to the right and this indicates that this is an indication that at old price more of the commodity is supplied now this shift to the right is usually due to favorable change favorable change in factors affecting supply e.g. provision of subsidy by the government so what happens is that once the government provides subsidy the cost of production of this commodity will reduce and hence the company the producers will be able to provide more or be able to produce more of these products okay due to this subsidy and if they're able to produce more of the product it means that the supply of the product in the market will increase and that is why the curve will shift to the right or shift from s0 s0 as that is this one to s2 s2 so as we have rightly established the supply curve will shift from s0 s0 to s2 s2 which is option a and is the correct answer to this question thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers Hello and welcome. I will be answering YEC 2020 Economics Objective Past Question 8. So you have this figure represented here and it is labeled as figure 4. Now in figure 4 above, YZ represents A. Excess demand B. Excess supply C. Equilibrium quantity D. Equilibrium price So in this figure, this graph, you have a demand curve and a supply curve plotted together on the same price quantity axis so this is the supply curve and this is the demand curve so they are plotted on the same price quantity axis and we are asked what this portion this yz okay so yz is this portion what does it represent now the yz portion represents yz represents excess supply excess supply 
this portion on the graph represents excess supply and the point where these two curves intersect is known as the equilibrium the equilibrium price and this portion below the equilibrium price this portion below the equilibrium price is referred to as excess demand or shortage so we have established that yz this portion here line yz represents excess supply and excess supply is option b which is the correct answer to this question thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers the fact that their income is increasing so as their income is increasing they are going for substitutes that they feel are better because they can now afford them so based on this description you can see the good is inferior when its demand drops as the income of the consumers increase so as we have rightly established a good is described as inferior if their demand decreases as income increases that is option c which is the correct answer to this question thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers hello and welcome i will be answering why 2020 economics objective past question 10. a consumer is in equilibrium when a his market supply is equal to his market demand b he maximizes his satisfaction from spending his income c the market is also in equilibrium d he has consumed all he wants now this is concept is known as consumer equilibrium consumer equilibrium and consumer equilibrium is a situation where a consumer spends his given income on the purchase of one or more commodities in such a way that he gets maximum satisfaction and has no urge to change his level of consumption so the main point here is that the consumer equilibrium is a situation where the consumer spends his income 
on purchase of commodities such that he gets maximum satisfaction okay and that is what is reflected here in option b it says he maximizes his satisfaction so gaining maximum satisfaction from spending his income so option b he maximizes his satisfaction from spending his income is the correct answer to this question thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers hello and welcome i will be answering yx 2020 economic subjective past question 11 goods that are abundant in supply usually have low a total utility b marginal utility c average utility d time utility now let's look at the definition of each of the concepts now option a which is total utility refers to the total amount of satisfaction total amount of satisfaction a consumer derives from the consumption of a commodity at a particular time option b which is marginal utility refers to the additional satisfaction derived by consuming an extra unit of a commodity option c which is average utility refers to the satisfaction which a consumer derives per unit of a commodity consumed and option d time utility is not a concept now from all these we are asked that goods that are abundant in supply usually have low what utility do they have what low type of utility do they have now there is a concept known as the law of diminishing marginal utility and this law states that the satisfaction this satisfaction derived from consuming successive units of a commodity will diminish as total consumption increases so from what we see here as the consumption increases as consumption of successive units you know increases the satisfaction will reduce so goods that are, are, in, are in abundant supply goods that are abundant in supply okay goods that are abundant in supply are goods that are plenty so such that you can consume successive units of that particular good or that particular commodity and based on this law the marginal utility will reduce so option b low marginal utility is the correct answer to this question thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers I will be answering why 2020 economics objective past question 12 an increase in supply means that a more is sold at different price B more is sold at the same price C there is a leftward shift of the supply curve D there is a movement along the supply curve now supply the whole concept of supply refers to the quantity of commodity which a producer is willing 
and able willing and able to offer for sale at a particular price and at a particular period of time now when there is increase in supply the supply curve shifts to the right indicating that at the old or at the same price more more of the goods is sold so more is sold at the same or old price that is what happens when there is an increase in supply and it's also indicated by a shift to the right on the supply curve so more is sold at the same price is option b so option b is the correct answer to this question thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers And welcome. I will be answering why 2020 economic subjective past question 13. If an increase in the price of crude oil led to an increase in the prices of kerosene and grease, then kerosene and grease are in A. Joint supply, B. Competitive supply, C. Market supply, D. Composite supply. So we have various types of of supply given to us in the options so let's define each of them and see which one fits this scenario we have in the question now option a which is joint supply occurs when two or more commodities are produced and supplied from one source or raw material so for example you have petrol and kerosene from crude oil so this is where you see joint supply now option b is competitive supply and it refers to when many commodities are supplied for the satisfaction of a particular want for example meat and fish so meat and fish are both supplied for the satisfaction of a particular want now option c market supply is not a type of supply it is not a type of supply and then option d which is composite supply refers to when a commodity can serve two or more purposes it refers to the supply seen in a commodity that can serve two or more purposes now from what we have seen here and in the question we are seeing that the price of crude oil increase in price of crude oil led to increase in prices of kerosene and grease now kerosene and grease are both obtained from crude oil that means kerosene and grease are gotten from the same source or from the same raw material and that is what we saw when we looked at joint supply so joint supply are in option uh joint supply is option a so kerosene and grease are in joint supply so option a joint supply is the correct answer to this question thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers
increase in production and supply of the other so as we have rightly established here option b joint supply is the correct answer to this question thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers Hello and welcome. I will be answering YEC 2020 Economics Objective Past Question 17. A large firm may experience diseconomies of scale if there is A. Difficulty in coordinating decisions B. Division of labor in production C. Employment of more specialists D. Decrease in cost of production Now the concept of diseconomies of scale It happens Diseconomies of scale happens when a company or business grows so large that the cost per unit increases so it's just like saying their overall cost of production increases now amongst the option given to us the factor that is likely to increase cost of production here is employment of more specialists employment of more specialists now when more specialists are employed it means the cost of production in, uh, increases due to the fact that their salaries and wages have to be paid so employment of more specialists increases cost of production via the salaries of the employees so it happens when there is C employment of more specialists. Thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers. Hello and welcome. I will be answering why 2020 economics objective past question 19. One feature of the average fixed cost is that it a falls continuously but is never equal to zero. B is U-shaped and intersects the y-axis. C rises and falls faster than the marginal cost. D is always higher than the average variable cost. So the concept we are looking at here is average fixed cost. An average fixed cost is defined as the fixed cost. The fixed cost. The fixed cost of producing a unit of output a fixed cost of producing a unit of output now on the graph if, you, if it's plotted graph of cost against output the curve looks like this average fixed cost so from the curve you can observe that it falls continuously but never reaches the origin never gets to zero so falls continuously but is never equal to zero is option a option a is the correct answer to this question thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers Hello and welcome. I will be answering why 2020 economics objective past question 21. Table 1 below shows the total revenue schedule of a firm. So you have the revenue schedule here with one column indicating output and the other total revenue. Now, what is the unit price of the what is the unit price of the firm's output? A $10, B $2.7, C $2, D $1.70. Now, to get unit price, unit price is what we are trying to calculate. And to get unit price, what you do is to divide any of the price given to you under total revenue by its corresponding units so for example if we are to take these two 
in order to get the unit price, we would divide the total revenue of it, that is 85, divided by 50. And if you do that, what it will give you is $1.70. Now, it will also give you the same value if you do for all of them. So it is a constant value, $1.70. $1.70 is option D and is the correct answer to this question. Thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers. Hello and welcome. I'm going to be answering YX 2020 Economics Objective Past Question 23. Organization and entrepreneurship are vested in different persons in a A. Cooperative society B. Sole proprietorship C. Partnership D. Public company So you have various types of companies here and we are asked for the company in which organization and entrepreneurship are vested in different persons Now option A says cooperative society Now a cooperative society is made up of a group of people who come together okay, with common interest of advancing the members' welfare. So that is the common interest of that group of a cooperative society. Now a sole proprietorship is a company that is run and operated by one person. So a one person or one man business is what is called a sole proprietorship. Then partnership is made up of two to twenty people. A collaboration of two to twenty people to start up a firm. And then public company refers to a, a company that is owned and financed by the government. Owned and financed by the government. Now as it regards to organization and entrepreneurship, organization refers to the structure, the ownership, the management, the ownership of the firm. And then entrepreneurship refers to the day-to-day -day running of the business, the management of the business. Now, in a cooperative society, yes, you have members who own part or who are part of the organization of the firm or of the society. Now, these same members amongst themselves select those that will manage it. So, you can't say the membership and entrepreneurship are vested in different persons because it is the same set of people, the same, just a select few number of the members that are also a part of the management. So, it is not vested in different persons. Now, sole proprietorship is obviously owned and operated by one person so everything is run by one person now the same thing goes for partnership this same group of people are responsible for the organization and entrepreneurship however in a public company it is owned by the government but in terms of the entrepreneurship or the management a group of persons a group of persons are appointed a group of persons are appointed for the management so it is not the same as the government who owns or who is responsible for the organization of the business so option d public company is the correct answer to this question thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers Hello and welcome. I will be answering YEC 2020 Economics Objective Past Question 24. The public sector in a mixed economy is not always efficient because of A. Bureaucratic practices B. The desire to make huge profits C. Annual planning of activities D. The activities of shareholders Now, one of the disadvantages of a mixed economy a mixed economy is that it is not always efficient now what is a mixed economy in the first place now a mixed economy is a type of economic system a type of economic system in which both the private and public ownership private and public ownership of 
means of production and distribution exist together in a country okay this is this type of economy practiced in nigeria this is an example so in a mixed economy like i said the one of the disadvantages of it is that it is not always efficient so why is it not always efficient now it, the efficiency is not usually present or it hardly occurs due to the involvement the involvement of the state or bureaucratic practices now bureaucratic uh, practices or bureaucracy just refers to government by administrators or officers so there are some uh, behaviors of the state or involvement of the state or of the public or of the government okay the public involvement of the public which are more or less bureaucratic in nature so because of this reason because of the involvement of the state the involvement of the public with this method of bureaucracy the mixed economy system is not always efficient so option a bureaucratic practices is the correct answer to this question thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers Hello and welcome. I will be answering YEC 2020 Economics Objective Past Question 25. Which function of the wholesaler enables him to stabilize prices? A. Warehousing goods. B. Advertising the goods. C. Granting credits to retailers. D. Transporting goods. Now, the wholesaler is one or is part of the channel of distribution. And the wholesaler is basically described as a merchant a merchant who purchases goods in large quantities that is from the producers large quantities from the producer or manufacturer and sells in small quantities to retailers now one of the major functions or importance of the wholesaler is stabilization of prices and he does this he helps to stabilize prices or helps to prevent price fluctuation by stocking the goods until they are demanded that is he stocks the goods in a warehouse until they are demanded so by this he helps to stabilize prices or prevents price fluctuation so stocking of goods until they are demanded is categorized as or is described as warehousing so warehousing is that commercial activity that entails stocking of goods until they are demanded for or before they are used so this helps to stabilize prices and as a function of the wholesaler that is a warehousing goods Thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers. Hello and welcome. I will be answering YEC 2020 Economics Objective Past Question 26. In the long run, as individuals receive higher wages, it causes a demand for food to increase to decrease b demand for leisure to decrease c supply of normal goods to decrease c supply of labor to decrease so we are asked in the long run for the effect of higher wages in the long run now when there is increase of wages or when there are higher wages so i would say with higher wages with higher wages what happens is that workers will give workers will give greater value to work than leisure 
Now, this is because, of course, there is more benefit to working than leisure. So, as time progresses, people will begin to prioritize work over leisure. So, this substitution effect, substitution of leisure for work, the substitution effect causes more hours to be worked as wages rise. So because of this effect, the demand for leisure will decrease. Demand for leisure will decrease. So option B, demand for leisure to decrease is the correct answer to this question. Thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers. Welcome, I will be answering why 2020 economic subjective past question 27. Population growth rates can be calculated as A. Birth rate minus death rate minus emigrants minus immigrants. B. Birth rate minus death rate plus migration rate minus immigration rate. C. Birth rate minus death rate. D. Birth rate minus death rate plus immigrant minus emigrant. Now, population growth rate is dependent on four factors. Birth rate, birth rate, death rate, immigration, and emigration. So birth rate, of course, has to do with the rate of at which people, individuals are born, death rate with the rate at which individuals die, immigration with movement of people into the country, and emigration movement out of the country. So as it is dependent on these factors, an increase in population or a growth in population will have to do more with birth rates. So in order to guess that, using these four factors, you will subtract death rates from birth rates and also emigration from immigration and then add the values together. So it will now be birth rates minus death rates then plus immigrants, that is people entering the country, minus emigrants, people leaving the country. So that is affected as option D, birth rate minus death rate plus immigrants minus emigrants. That is the way to calculate population growth rates. Thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers. Hello and welcome. I will be answering why 2020 economic subjective past question 28. Labor productivity is defined as A. Output per man hour B. Average output C. The maximum number of hours worked D. The total output of labor Now, the concept of labor productivity in a broader sense is defined as or it measures it measures the hourly output of an economy now it does this or it in other words it represents the total volume of output in gross domestic products produced per unit of labor so the hourly output per person okay it's a function of the number of people the number of employed persons and their hourly output now amongst the options what best describes those functions that is number of employed persons okay the output based on number of employed persons per hour is best described by option a output per man hour that is employed person man per hour they are out the output okay so option a output per man hour is the correct answer to this question thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers
Hello and welcome. This is WIAC 2020 Economics Objective Pass Question 31. Import substitution as a strategy of industrialization is the A. Replacement of locally produced goods with imported ones. B. Development of local firms to produce local goods that are imported. C. Establishment of firms to process imported raw materials. D. Act of using local inputs to produce goods for export. Now, import substitution import substitution is a strategy that involves deliberate attempts by the government aimed at encouraging the growth of industries within the country which produce goods and services which would otherwise have been imported. So the strategy involves encouraging the growth of industries which produces goods that would otherwise have been imported as a substitute for importation generally now amongst the options we have examined option b says development of local firms to produce local goods that are imported so you can see that this reflects the definition of import substitution strategy as local firms or local industries are, are groomed or growed to the a point where they can produce local goods that would have been imported. So option B, development of local firms to produce local goods that are imported is the correct answer to the question. Thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers. Hello and welcome. I will be answering why 2020 economics objective past question 32. Which of the following are intermediate products? A. Cement and steel. B. Furniture and shirt. C. Handkerchief and shoe. D. Table and door. So the concept here is intermediate products. And intermediate products or intermediate products are products that might require further processing before they are saleable to the ultimate consumer. So intermediate products are basically just products that may require one or more forms of processing, further processing before they will be useful or sold to the ultimate consumer. So let's look at each of the options and see which one falls under this description. Now, cement and steel. Cement and steel can actually be classified as intermediate products because they might require further processing before they are eventually sold to the ultimate consumer. Now, cement, not every consumer requires cement the way it is. So it might actually have to be processed into, let's say, blocks or for even higher purposes might be used in the construction of houses before those houses are sold or rented out to consumers likewise steel steel might a bar of steel a normal bar of steel may not be useful to every other consumer but once it is processed into let's say forms that may be useful to man let's say used in the construction of cars so that car now is saleable to an ultimate consumer so option a cement and steel is the correct answer to this question as cement and steel are intermediate products the other options look at b furniture and sheds do not require further processing before they are sold you buy a shed the way it is and you use it that way likewise furniture you buy chairs tables the way they are and use them the way they are handkerchief and shoes as well and also tables and doors so as we have rightly 
explained cements and steel are intermediate products thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers hello and welcome i will be answering why 2020 economics objective past question 34 which of the following factors may lead to underestimation of national income figures a availability of skilled statisticians b high volume of exports c emigration of skilled workers to foreign countries d subsistence production so if you are to rephrase this question there are also another way to put this question is what are what are the problems of computing national income so this is the question they are asking you so which of these factors can be described as a problem in terms of computing national income now availability of skilled statistician is more of a benefit in terms of computing national income so it is not the answer to the question option b says high volume of exports it isn't directly linked to the underestimation of national income figures it isn't exactly linked to as a problem in terms of computing the national income the volume of exports as long as it can be traced can actually you know be computed and you can't really say it will lead to underestimation of the national income so it is not the answer to the question so we have ruled these two out now option c says emigration of skilled workers to foreign countries now again this isn't directly linked to underestimation of national income so it is not the answer to the question now option d says subsistence production now the predominance the predominance of subsistence production in an economy subsistence production such as tailoring farming etc makes estimation difficult and it is often underestimated now these subsistence jobs these subsistence occupations or subsistence production in general are very difficult to estimate in terms of the value or in terms of the income they generate so because of that reason uh, the national income figure based on this what we have just explained is often underestimated as a result of predominance of subsistence production in an economy so option d subsistence production is the correct answer to the question thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers Hello and welcome. I will be answering why 2020 economics objective past question 35. Inflation may occur if a rate of productivity is higher than wage rate, b prices fluctuate during a particular season of the year, c wage increase is granted without increase in productivity, d the government embarks on restrictive money policies. So what we are asking is which among the options can be responsible for inflation? So inflation basically refers to the persistent rise persistent rise in the persistent rise in the general price level of goods and services. So that is inflation. Now let's look at what may uh, lead to inflation among what is given to us. Now option A says rate of productivity is higher than wage rates. Now rate of productivity being higher than wage rates cannot lead to inflation because the productivity is more than the amount of money that can be put into circulation from the wages of the citizens. So this is not the answer to the question. 
option B says prices fluctuate during a particular season of the year. This option also cannot be linked directly to inflation. Okay, fluctuation of prices during a specific season cannot lead to it directly cannot directly relate it to inflation. Now option C says which increase which increase is granted without increase in productivity. Now when wages and salaries are increased without corresponding increase in supply of goods and services that is production goods and services it can lead to excess money in circulation chasing few goods so the prices of the few goods because of the uh, excess amount of money in circulation the prices of the few goods will rise so and that will be inflation so this is what happens when wages and salaries are increased and there is no corresponding increase in supply of goods and services that is increase in productivity so option c wage increase is granted without increase in productivity is linked to inflation and is the correct answer to this question the government embarks on restrictive money monetary policies which is option d is usually done to prevent inflation so it is not the correct answer to this question so option c as we have rightly established is the correct answer to this question thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers Hello and welcome. I will be answering YF 2020 Economics Objective Past Question 36. Money would cease to be a good store of value when A. Prices of goods and services are falling slowly. B. There is high level of unemployment. C. Prices of goods and services are rising rapidly. D. Prices of goods and services are rising slowly. Now, this question is basically asking what will make money to lose its value and the value of money the value of money is basically the quantity of goods and services which a given amount of money can purchase now this is the rule of thumb concerning the value of money. Now, the value of money varies inversely with the price level. So, this means that if price level increases, value of money decreases. So this is the inverse relationship between the value of money and the price level. And likewise, if price level decreases, value of money will increase. So this is how it works. Now, option C here says prices of goods and services are rising rapidly. If the prices of goods and services are rising rapidly, that means the same amount of money that would have bought a particular quantity of goods will no longer be able to purchase that same quantity of goods so that means the value of money will decrease so option c prices of goods and services are rising rapidly will be one of the reasons when money will lose its value and hence will cease to be a good store of value so as we have established option c is the correct answer to this question thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers Hello and welcome. I will be answering YX 2020 Economics Objective Past Question 37. Governments in West Africa can curtail infl inflation by A. Purchasing securities in the open market 
B. Selling securities in the open market. C. Encouraging importation of goods from all countries. D. Encouraging banks to lend for consumption. Now, inflation. Inflation is defined as persistent a persistent rise in the price level of goods and services now this usually occurs this usually occurs when there is a lot of money in circulation in the system when there's a lot of money in circulation so usually in order to curtail inflation the government usually takes measures that involves pulling money out of the system so let's look at which of these options entails pulling out money from the system in order for consumers to pull back their spending now option a and b have something in common and it is referring to what is known as open market operations what is known as open market operations now the open market operation just involves buying and selling of financial securities by the government that is what the open market operation entails now whether government chooses to buy or sell depends on the situation of the economy now they sell the government sells their securities in order to pull money in order to pull money out of the system and government buys securities in order to put money into the system for circulation so buying occurs when there is deflation and the government wants to tackle it okay but selling occurs when there is inflation and like we said the government wants to decrease you know the money available for consumers to spend so they want to pull money out of the system so sell they sell securities in order to curtail inflation so option b selling securities in the open market is the correct answer to this question encouraging of importation uh encouraging of importation from all countries is usually linked to inflation importation is linked to inflation and encouraging banks to lend for consumption of course puts more money into the system and hence also encourages inflation so as we have rightly established option b is the correct answer to this question thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers Hello and welcome. I will be answering YEC 2020 Economic Subjective Past Question 38. The central bank can reduce the ability of commercial banks to give out loans by A. Raising the bank rate B. Reducing special deposits C. Reducing the liquidity ratio D. Issuing more currency Now, amongst the options given to us, the measure that is usually taken by the central bank to reduce the ability of commercial banks to give out loans is option a raising the bank rate now bank rate bank rate is the minimum rate of interest charged by the central bank for discounting bill of exchange if it increases loan to the public reduces and vice versa okay so this bank rate is a rate of interest charged by central bank for bill of exchange now if it increases the loan to public reduces and if it reduces the loan to public increases so the government or the central bank rather the central bank okay 
whenever they want to reduce the ability of commercial bank to give out loans one of the measures they take among the options given to us is to raise or increase the bank rates and as we have rightly established it reduces loan to public so option a raising the bank rate is the correct answer to this question the remaining three options are not linked to reducing the ability of commercial banks to give out loans thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers Hello and welcome. I will be answering YEC 2020 Economic Subjective Past Question 39. Tools of monetary policy do not include A. Open market operations B. Reserve requirements C. Bank rates D. Tax and public expenditure So the tools of monetary policy are basically systems used by usually government or the central bank government or the central bank to reduce or generally to regulate the circulation of money to regulate circulation of money now let's look at the options and see which one does not cannot be classified under the tools of monetary policy now option A says open market operation. Now it refers to central bank purchases or sales of government securities in order to expand, that is increase, or contract, that is decrease the money in the banking system and it is also done to influence to influence interest rates so as we have established here it is done to expand or contract money within the circulation in the banking system and the question asks for the one which is not among the tools of monetary policy so as we have, as we have established here the open market operation is a tool of monetary policy because it is used to regulate circulation of money in a particular system so it is not the answer to this question now option b says reserve requirement and reserve requirement is a central bank regulation a central bank regulation that sets the minimum amount of reserves that must be held by a commercial bank so a certain amount of reserves of money must be held by a commercial bank and that amount is regulated by the central bank so as you can see here it also stands to regulate the amount of money in the, in the banking system and hence it is a tool of monetary policy and it's not the answer to this question now option c says bank rate and bank rate is the rate charged by central banks or central bank for lending funds to commercial banks and once again it is used to regulate also this amount of money in the banking system so it is a tool of monetary policy and it's not the answer to the question now option d says tax and public expenditure and tax and public expenditure tax basically just re uh, refers to the financial charge imposed on taxpayers which may be individuals or entities or companies okay in order to fund in order to fund government spending and then the public expenditure just refers to this government spending the spending made by government on collective needs and wants such as salaries 
pensions, security, ETC. And as we have seen here, it is not used to regulate the amount of money in regulation in the banking system. So it is not a tool of monetary policy and hence it is the correct answer to this question. Thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers. Hello and welcome. I will be answering why 2020 economics objective past question 40. During inflation, the appropriate fiscal measure to adopt is to A. Increase indirect taxes B. Increase direct taxes C. Reduce personal income tax D. Increase government expenditure Now, fiscal measures, fiscal measures are basically used to control inflation by reducing the amount of the amount of money in circulation and one of these fiscal measures includes increasing direct taxes okay another measure used to tackle uh, inflation is to sell when the government chooses to sell securities in the open market okay another is to raise bank rates etc so all these measures are used to uh, tackle inflation but among them the fiscal measure as we have mentioned is increasing direct taxes and increasing direct taxes or increase direct taxes is option b so option b is the correct answer to this question Thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers. A system in which the rate of tax increases uh, the rate of tax decreases rather for regressive decreases for regressive is decreases as income increases so as the person's income increases the tax they pay the rate of tax which they pay decreases and option D progressive tax is a system in which the rate of tax increases as income increases so in progressive tax the higher the income 
the higher the rate of tax. And as you can see from the question we are giving, that is the case because the person with the higher income pays a higher tax than the person with the lower income paying the lower tax. So this system of taxation employed is option D, progressive tax. Thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers. Hello and welcome. I will be answering why 2020 economic subjective past question 42. Expenditure on food takes a large proportion of incomes of people in A. Industrialized countries B. Advanced countries C. Developing countries D. Capitalist countries Now this is a very straightforward question where I asked expenditure on food takes a large proportion of incomes of people in what type of countries So in other words which or what countries do people spend the largest proportion of their income on food? So, among these options, developing countries, developing countries spend highest or the highest proportion of their incomes on food in fact from r recent statistics there are countries that spend up to 58 percent okay developing countries specifically that spend up to 58 percent on of their incomes on food so as we have established the correct answer is c developing countries thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers Hello and welcome. I will be answering why 2020 economic subjective past question 43. A country should embark on development planning to ensure that A. It becomes popular among the community of nations. B. It also does what others are doing. C. Its scarce productive resources are efficiently utilized. D. The nation is able to contribute its own quota towards international organizations. Now, the concept we are looking at here is development planning and development planning refers to the strategic measurable goals that a person organization or community plans to meet within a certain amount of time now what are the reasons or what, um, which one among the options can be seen as a reason why a country should embark in this development planning okay so from the options given to us option c which says to ensure that its scarce productive resources are efficiently utilized is the most likely and correct answer to this question because as we have seen from the de uh, definition of development planning it refers to strategic measurable goals so setting goals okay setting strategic goals setting of strategic goals by a community okay and this setting of strategic goals by a community will enable the community or the country to utilize to efficiently utilize the resources available to make sure that these strategic goals that have been measured are met instead of just doing things without a set out plan or a set out you know uh, goal to accomplish so option c its scarce productive resources are efficiently utilized is the correct answer to this question thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers
Hello and welcome. I will be answering YEC 2020 Economics Objective Past Question 44. A country is allowed to import just 50,000 tons of rice annually. This describes A. Devaluation B. Tariff C. Embargo D. Quota So let's look at the definition of each of the options to see which one matches the scenario placed in the question. Now, devaluation refers to the official lowering of the value of a country's currency within a fixed within a fixed exchange rate system so as you can see it has nothing to do with the scenario painted in the question so a devaluation is not the answer to the question now option b says tariff and tariff is a tax on imports or exports between sovereign between sovereign states okay and as you can see from the scenario painted in the question it is not it has nothing to do with a tax on imports or exports okay so option b tariff is not the correct answer to this question now option c says embargo now option c embargo an embargo is a government order that restricts commerce with a specified country or the exchange of specific goods now as you can see also from the question no specific goods is uh, restricted instead what you have restricted is the number of a particular good so option c embargo is not the correct answer to this question now option d which is quota refers to a limited quantity a limited quantity of a particular product which under official controls can be produced exported or imported now as you can see the what you have in the question a limited amount of rice or a limited quantity of rice is allowed or is controlled so allowed to be imported now we define quota as a limited quantity of a particular product so in this case the particular product is rice and which under official controls can be produced exported or imported so it is a limited quantity that can be imported so option d quota is the correct answer to this question Thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers. Hello and welcome. I will be answering YEC 2020 Economics Objective Past Question 45. Dumping is selling goods in a foreign market at a price A. Below what is sold at the home market B. Above what is sold at the home market c equal to what is sold at the home market d equal to the cost of producing goods now dumping the purpose of dump, uh, the concept of dumping refers to so dumping is when a country or a company exports a product at a price that is lower in the foreign importing market than the price in the exporters domestic market okay so, so below what is sold at the home market 
so the price is sold at a price that is lower in the foreign market than in the domestic market so option a says below what is sold at the home market so option a is the correct answer to this question thank you and please subscribe to this channel for the, for more videos and for more past questions and answers Hello and welcome. I will be answering why 2020 economic subjective past question 46. The principle of comparative advantage encourages a country to a produce only consumer goods, b engage in trade if it can produce a commodity at a lower cost, c specialize in the production of all goods, d try as much as possible to be self-sufficient. So comparative advantage or the principle of comparative advantage refers to an economy's ability to produce a particular good or service at a lower opportunity cost than its trading partners it's a lower opportunity cost than its trading partners now the major or the foremost importance of this of this comparative advantage is that it gives the ability ability that it gives companies the ability to sell goods and services at prices that are lower than competitors and hence gain stronger sales. Now aside this, it also encourages a country to engage in trade as it can produce at lower opportunity costs. So it will be the country will be able to produce goods, hence encouraging the country to engage in trade, which will then boost the country's economy and revenue. So the point I've just made is option B, engage in trade if it can produce a commodity at a lower cost. So option B is the correct answer to this question. Thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers. Answering why 2020 economic subjective past question 47. In order to discourage the importation of manufactured goods, a country should adopt A. Impulse promotion strategy B. Export led strategy C. Liberal foreign exchange D. Import substitution strategy Now amongst the options given to us, the one that has to do with improvement of a, country, a country's economy or industries in order to discourage importation of manufactured goods is option D which is the import substitution strategy and import substitution, substitution strategy is a development strategy focusing on promoting domestic production of previously imported goods to foster industrialization and to discourage importation. Now, this process or this strategy promotes or equips industries, develops industries to produce goods that would have otherwise been imported such that there will be no need to import such goods again. So as we have rightly established, option D, import substitution strategy, is the correct answer to this question. 
Thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers. Tariff policy among member nations. Now, the second point to note is that each country is free to have its own tariff policy as regards commodities from countries outside the free trade area. So this second point we have just stated, where each country is free to have its own tariff policy as regards commodities from other countries outside the free trade area is reflected here in option A. Each member operates its own barriers against non-members. So just like we have expressed in this point, each country is free to have its own barriers against countries outside the area, so against non-members. So option A is the correct answer to this question. Thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers. Hello and welcome. I will be answering YEC 2020 Economic Subjective Past Question 49. The foremost objective of the International Bank of Reconstruction and Development, IBRD, is to A. Help promote private and public investments. B. Assist members achieve balance of payment stability. C. Grant long-term loans for infrastructure. D. Maintain stability of foreign exchange. Now, the IBRD, the International Bank of Reconstruction and Development, is popularly known as the World Bank, the World Bank, and its foremost or primary objective is granting long-term loans for infrastructural development. Okay. So the World Bank has about 178 member nations and was established in 1944 for this purpose of granting long-term loans for infrastructural developments. And option C says grant long-term loans for infrastructure. So as we have established, option C is the correct answer to this question. Thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers. And welcome. I will be answering why 2020 economic subjective past question 50. The exploitation of mineral resources constitutes which form of production? A. Primary production. B. Secondary production. C. Tertiary production. D. Services production. Now, we're asked.
for which under which form of production does the exploitation of mineral resources fall under so let's look at each of the options and pick out the one which matches the question now option a primary production it refers to the extraction of raw materials provided by nature e.g. mining fishing agriculture etc now option b which is secondary production involves the transformation of raw materials or semi finished goods into final forms that are acceptable to consumers. Option C tertiary production is concerned with the provision of commercial and professional services to the people e.g. what we see doctors teachers etc and option d services production is not a form of production so we are asked where the exploitation of mineral resources falls under and the exploitation of mineral resources is mining majorly majorly mining and of course mineral resources are raw materials so the extraction of raw materials provided by nature is primary production so option a primary production is the correct answer to this question thank you and please subscribe to this channel for more videos and for more past questions and answers